we are not getting quite as early a start as we could have. I know you don't want to hear that I've been up since about 5 this morning and could have easily got at this earlier. But I was perusing the uh, web, you might say, and uh, checking my, my comments for the, uh, for the last episode. And uh, yeah, uh, now, at least two viewers thought that the holes we're trying to drill out here had, the, had to do with the fact that this same deck is used for both the Rodney as well as the Nelson. So that got me to thinking, uh, well I'd already been thinking last night before I read the comments that <clears throat> I'm wondering if maybe more than just these nine holes that I have circled here uh, have to be drilled out. Um, because I was noticing afterwards that a lot of these other holes they don't go all the way through. Now could that be because that in the uh, the instructions that come with a Nelson it says to drill these out. I don't know. But I thought maybe what I should do is once again just quickly go ahead and see like for instance th there's this there's a set here of four and like like four sets of three I mean now I, I assumed that that was probably maybe lifeboats or something like that. Oh, and I noticed there's the same thing on the other, on the other side here. Now I, I was thinking that maybe lifeboats get mounted on there or, or something like that. So I thought maybe I should just go ahead in the manual and see if. Now I I, will, I don't want to turn this upside down. And, well, oh well, I can put them back. Uh, okay, is is there? Is there places, you know, I, I can actually see where they're supposed to come through here. There's a slight change in the, in the, in the way the plastic looks. Um, yeah, uh, is there stuff that we have to put there? Because once this deck is, is glued down on the hull, that's it. it it'd, be a, it'd be a hundred times harder to drill the holes out afterwards than it is right now. And I was thinking that, that maybe what I will do is, is I will do, use the drill press if it turns out I have to do all of these holes because there is a, there is a lot of them uh, that, go, that do not go all the way through. In fact, it, I, I would say over half of them don't go through. Anyway, uh, I, I just thought I, I better look into that. Um, and also I had mentioned yesterday that I, I was going to I was going to answer the questions in uh, in the episode uh, previous, uh, <clears throat> and uh, it, it turns out there's only there was only about four four uh, comments that actually had a question mark after it, and and that that's what I'm going by is uh, there were some some people that made statements that could be either taken as a statement or a question, but if there was no question mark after it, well. Uh, yeah, I, I just, I'll, I'll assume that the rest were just statements. I'm beating this to death, aren't I? Uh, let's, let's get on with it. There was something else I wanted to mention here. It has to do with the macro lens, which we use a lot. Now, these ring lights are not new technology. I've actually had this one for many, many years. It came with about a half a dozen adapters that you could screw on the front of, of different lenses, like this is the macro lens. Now, for whatever reason, I cannot find the adapter that allows me to, to screw in here where you normally screw your filter. And then, the, and then this thing, a bayonet clip sort of on, on, the, on the adapter. And I can't find the one that fits this lens. Um, now, the, the thinking is that uh, I, I'm big on lighting. I like to have lots of light and that way I can close my lens down. I don't have to have my lens wide open. I like to have the foreground and the background sharp at the same time. In other words, depth of field. I've talked about that to death. Um, anyway, uh, when, when you're moving in and you've got all this lighting around, often the camera will be in its own light and you'll have a shadow un underneath your lens. 
So the idea is you put you put the ring lens on and it just illuminates straight out in front. And uh, I don't know if I'm going to start using this again or not. I, I used it a lot many years ago back. I, I got it when I got my first uh, good Nikon camera. It was a, a D800. And as I mentioned, then I upgraded to the the 810. Then I upgraded to the 850. And now I've upgraded to the Z9. I don't know if there will be another. Well, maybe if they come out with uh, 12K videoing or something like that, I might think about it. And there are cameras out, out there right now that, that uh, video in 12K. Uh, I just can't afford one. Um, I'm not going to sell the house to buy a good video camera. I mean, that would be stupid, wouldn't it? Anyway, uh, yeah, the model table would be sitting outside in the front yard in the snow. Uh, <laughs> okay, uh, back to what we're talking about. Now, I I do have the the lens hood that came that came with this lens. Okay, and it being it at Mount Sin. Now, I never, never, never. I don't. I, I never have, nor probably never will, use the lens hood on this. And I was thinking, well, maybe I could cut it down in such a way that I could somehow mount this on it. But I don't know. Anyway, I'm just sort of making conversation here. Uh, let's uh, peruse ahead in our manual and uh, see if there's any places where we have to drop, you know stuff down on the deck. At least that's the plan for this morning. Now basically we were asked only um, I guess you'd say three questions that were different. And uh, approximately three, three people asked Basically, what are we going to do next? Well, clearly, what we're going to do next is we're, we're starting it. It's the Rodney. Now, when, when the uh, question was, was asked, we hadn't started the Rodney yet. And uh, another person wanted to know, he said something to the effect of, you've got two ships in your, in your case right now. Uh, now, I'm, I'm not taking the time to thunk them down on the bottom of the screen like I usually do because today was grocery day and I spent quite a bit of time doing that. Uh, yeah, so you got you got two ships in your case now. How, how many parts do you think there is altogether there? Well, I, w I went to go on Trumpeter's website and their site is down. It, it goes down occasionally, I notice. Um, I, I notice when they have their uh, their Chinese Christmas or whatever it is, or maybe it's the Chinese New Year, they 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 seem to close up shop, and uh, you you can't uh, get a hold of them. And uh, now the place that my son works is like that. Only they do it over Christmas time. They close down between Christmas and New Year's. And. Uh, uh, yeah. Anyway, so I, I couldn't I couldn't go on their site to find out because I, I remember that they when they describe their kits they do actually say how many parts there is in in each kit. And okay, now to answer that viewer's question, between the two ships there's approximately three thousand parts. Um, I think technically there should be a little more than that, but then we didn't put everything on if I remember right. Uh, most of it we put on, but there's there's the odd piece we did not put on. Okay, and the other other question that was basically different is, uh, are you going to make a plaque like you did for the Bismarck? Well, here it is. Uh, I already had this uh, in the computer, so all I had to do was basically change a, a little bit in the in the text and print it out. Uh, so yeah, so so that's what, that's what we're doing here, and this will go in the case, uh, you know, probably just over the bow of the hood. At least that's the plan. It's probably not going to happen today. Uh, oh, one of the viewers offered to uh, to send me some 
uh, I think it was a, like a brass. He's making brass nameplates or something like that, and he was wondering if I wanted one. Well, thanks for the offer, but I'd just as soon have my own, you know, even though the brass one would be nicer. I, I want my own stuff. <laughs> thanks, though. I, I really appreciate that. Okay, so uh, that's pretty much it for the questions in the episode that we posted the day before yesterday. Uh, so, so that would be uh, uh, 1071, I guess, episode 1071, because we're on 73 today. And we started the Rodney yesterday. Yeah, okay, I got it right. It would have been for episode questions in episode uh, 1071. Okay, we beat that to death too, didn't we? Let's... Uh, Let's get on with this. Oh, all right. I'll, I'll reposition just a little bit. I already did go through the manual. Okay, there's... <clears throat> okay, there's, there's one thing I forgot to mention about this. Uh, the, the person also wanted to know... Uh, I think it was our friend, uh, UK Jason. So, Jason, where did I get my information? Like, what did I use as a reference for this thing? Well, I use the uh, wiki, or Wikipedia, or whatever it is. I'm, I'm pretty sure you have that in the UK. Okay, now, I did go through this, and it appears that the manual has us dealing with the deck within the, within the first uh, 20 or so, epi I was going to say episodes, uh, steps. Okay, now, nowhere have I seen a pattern that represents what this looks would look like if we drilled all the holes through. So I, I am uh, basically convinced that uh, the, uh, the it only has the nine holes that it wants us to drill here are just to make it uh, compatible for the Rodney. And then we probably would be drilling out different holes to make it compatible with the uh, with the Nelson. So uh, there, there is going to be a lot of piddly little things that have to get dropped down. But I, I was looking for those, for those four, those, those, those four sets of three that were in a straight line, and that they would come right about here. And, and at first I thought, well, that must have something to do with the breakwater. But then I, I realized that it would be, it would be too, uh, they, they would be, the breakwater would be at too much of a, a steep angle. It, and and uh, anyway, they're just, uh, you know, there's, there's nowhere where there's that sort of thing. So I got a feeling that that is possibly for, for maybe lifeboats, uh, brackets or something. Anyway, I think, I think 22 is the, is the uh, end of the uh, dealing with the putting, dropping stuff down on the deck. And this would all be done after the deck was glued down onto the hull. And we couldn't we couldn't drill the holes out easily after that anyway. So I'm not too worried about it. We're just going to uh, go ahead now and, and uh, continue uh, making our holes. I do believe I have to find a bit yet that fits. Sorry, Kevin, I'm going to move you here. Uh, yeah, this larger hole here. And then I think we probably got it. It's not going to be as bad a bad a deal as I thought. Um, am I going to use the drill press? I'd kind of like to. It's, uh, it's, it's a lot more precise. Um, well, we'll see what happens here. If the next scene is the drill press sitting on the model table, well, well you'll know uh, <laughs> what happened. Anyway, so that's it for the questions. Okay, I've decided against the drill press, and the reason being is that the slowest I can get the chuck to turn on the drill press is about oh, 450 or so RPM. Um, you know, after I rearrange the belts on the pulleys, I think it's I think it's 450, 500, something like that. I know I have, the, I have one similar uh, in in the basement, but a, a larger one. I think I can get it to slow down to about 150, but it has three pulleys instead of the two. Uh, however, this this. I can go really slow. In other words, if something grabs and things start going, you might say, awry, uh, I can, you know, it's not going to happen nearly as fast as if uh, things go awry on the drill press. So uh, I think what we'll do is uh, 
you know, something like put put a block underneath and uh, at least when it pun punches through, which is going to be really fast, because um, there isn't a whole lot of plastic to go there. Maybe a, I was going to say a sixteenth of an inch, but it's more like just uh, maybe half a millimeter or less. Um, <clears throat> whatever that works out to. Anyway, I think we, we found all the, the drill bits except this one here. It's maybe a thousandth of an inch too large, but the next size down is a couple of thousandths of an inch too small. And it's my experience when I'm trying to plug a part into the deck, I would sooner have the hole slightly larger than smaller. Because once you get it basically in the right place and you put down your extra thin or whatever and the plastic starts melding together, uh, yeah, you, you can get it pretty much right and you don't have to fight getting the, the peg into the hole. In other words, you're not trying to like put a square peg in a round hole. Anyway, let's get at it here. Now, I don't know what it is we're going to be mounting here. But I do know I don't want to be putting a lot of pressure down because I don't want it to break out the other side. I want it to drill out the other side. Okay, we just do that do that seven more times. There were two larger holes like this. That's pretty good, I think. And then we had our two smaller ones on the bow. I don't know if there's much I can do about that. I don't want to close them over. Yet I want to get rid of this tear out or whatever you want to call it. At least most of it. Now I know that if we're going to be putting something plastic there, what's going to happen is the uh, this plastic that I'm taking off right now, if I didn't take it off, no, I can't really. Maybe I'm worrying about something I don't need to worry about, but well, we'll see what happens when it comes time to put whatever it is has to, has to go there. It's really fun about it, I should look it up. Although, no, what's the difference? Now you've heard me say this one before. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I get a coffee visitor. Well, today is Friday, and I got a caller quits for today. Thanks for watching, everybody. And all being well, we'll be seeing you tomorrow.